In a recent video performance, I received a lot of comments concerning the punch of the kick drum. So, as promised, this video is a tutorial about how to get that sound. And if you like that kind of thing, just remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. My name is Gabriel, and you are watching Drum Tip Tuesday. I've never been a big fan of uh, so-called authorities or teaching in definitives, and so I do my best to avoid uh, demonstrations that are general, standard, or otherwise one-size-fits-all. And I truly believe that the best way to learn something, anything specifically, is that thing in context. And it's the context that is all important. Take, for instance, this video, which you can see by clicking here, but only after watching this one, please. There are three major contributing factors involved in the way the kick drum sounds on that video. Number one is the drum itself, number two is the heads and tuning, number three is the miking and the processing. But first, the drum, which is an 18 inch by 22 inch Pacific Drums XR7 with a maple shell. The heads are an Evans EMAD heavyweight with an Evans PC2 double bass drum patch on the batter side and an Evans Onyx with a five inch hole on the front. The tuning that I incorporate is very low. When I put a head on, I basically just get it finger tight, and then I go around with the drum key just to take out the wrinkles and to get it in tune with itself from lug to lug. Now to this, I add inside a blanket that's folded kind of like a big burrito with about four inches of the girth of it resting lightly against the front and uh, batter head. And it's important to uh, mention at this point that I use a relatively square plastic uh, beater, very important. And because those heads don't matter unless you can hear what each contributes to the sound, I incorporate two mics to pick up the complete sound of the kick drum. One that is mostly for the articulation or the tick or the beater contact sound, one that gets the breath or the body of the drum. Also important to mention at this point is that I do not spend a lot of money on these mics. Uh, at the time of the recording of this video, you can pick up the Hemu, I believe it's pronounced, HDM61 on Amazon for $34, and at Sweetwater, which is very rapidly becoming my favorite place to get gear, you can get the Behringer B1 for just $90. Now, for the HDM61 with an internal structure that looks mostly like a cheap version of a Shore 57 inside a large capsule, uh, the price is okay. But for the specs of the Behringer being almost exactly like that of the legendary Neumann U87, um, that's a great deal because it's uh, what's the special sauce in this recipe. And so, because in addition to the dynamic mic that's inside, I had that large condenser B1 on the outside, uh, getting the body of the drum. With these heads and mics in place, now we're dressed for success, but success isn't guaranteed just yet. We need the proper EQ or the equalization of the frequencies and some compression in this case to actually sort of unify the impact of those mics. Now I do all that uh, adjusting over on my uh, analog mixing board, so now we're gonna go over there and check that out. Okay, so here we are over by the mixing boards. Looks a little bit more complicated than it is. Get, I could get more into that in another video, but just briefly, they all go to the same place, okay? This one mixes everything here, goes into here through this. This one sends all those channels and the ones that are put directly into this, into the Mac with one uh, right and left stereo input via USB. That's the long and short of it. Now let's take a look at some of the details that we're interested in today as far as our compression and EQ settings. This channel, in other words, and then we'll take a look at this channel. Okay, so over here, a closer look at the mixing board reveals some things that we'd expect and maybe some things that we don't expect. This, or these, are the settings for the uh, dynamic microphone that is inside the kick drum aimed at the batter head. So here we find something of the compression settings that we would expect. Uh, that being compression, significant amount of compression, although maybe not quite as significant as it looks represented on this board all the way up to the max, uh, because from what I've experienced, 
Um, these mixing boards have a very light compression. So if you want a decent kick drum compression, what you have is this thing turned almost all the way up. That is to be expected. What you might not expect is this, as soon as I come down here, you have your basic uh, three band EQ, one set at 12K, one at 2.5K, and then one at 80 Hertz. The high and the mid, I actually have boosted. Now this is a kick drum, we're talking about a very low sound. And the lows, I have rolled off, kind of the opposite of what you'd think, but not really if you remember the very beginning conversation, because each mic has its own specific purpose. The purpose of the one on the inside is to get the, the batter impact or the sound of the beater crashing into the front head. That's why you have the EQ here uh, on high and mid boosted while the low is cut. The low is taken care of more by the uh, microphone, the large uh, diameter condenser microphone in front of the head. Now let's take a look at those settings. Okay, now over here, we have the settings for the mic, uh, the, that Behringer that I was talking about earlier, um, that's in front of the kick drum. Now here you might find, well, you're gonna find more of what you'd expect as far as the EQ. Well, first of all, the compression is exactly the same. We, it exists and it's on pretty good, pretty high setting. Now here, we roll off the high, the 12K, we roll off the 2.5K a little bit. I found that this mic is real sensitive to these adjustments other than uh, unlike the dynamic mics. Uh, so I just have to pull up the low a little bit. So here's where you find your uh, low end frequency or low end gut or uh, sort of uh, girth to the sound. Okay, so now that's all the technical aspects of it. Let's take a listen. The first thing I'm gonna do is Take the dynamic microphone, isolate that while I'm playing a simple beat, then do the same thing to the condenser. Then we're gonna put them together so you can hear them together. Then I'll actually play the whole drum set so you can just hear the kick in its natural habitat. Let's go back and take a listen. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you got something out of it that you consider valuable. If so, please like, comment, and subscribe to see more here on Drum Tip Tuesday. I'm Gabriel and I'll see you in the next video.